Hi, this is Manos Berlakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting video 9.3 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This video discusses what to do if there is difficulty delivering a balloon or a stent, or for that matter, any other coronary equipment. This is part of steps 9 and 10 of the 14 steps of percutaneous coronary intervention, which have to do with lesion preparation and stand delivery. Specifically for balloon angioplasty, this is step number 8, which is advancing the balloon to the target lesion, and there is something very similar for the stents and the other devices. Very importantly, if there is difficulty delivering equipment, before doing anything else, one needs to ascertain that the guide wire is into the right position in the distal true lumen. Sometimes the lesion for resistant advancing equipment may be that the guide wire has entered a small branch or is actually outside the coronary artery, and if one does not realize this and tries to push equipment through that area, severe complications such as perforation can occur. There are five broad technique categories about how to deliver equipment. And those can be grouped into three main modes. The first one is to increase the guide catheter support that is done by various techniques using different guide wires. The second one is to modify the vessel, both the target lesion as well as the proximal vessel. And the third one is to use different types of equipment, for example, shorter balloons or different types of stents, such as shorter and thin strut stents. And we'll first start with the guide catheter support. There are several ways in which uh, the support of the guide catheter can be enhanced. The first one is to use a larger lumen guide catheter. Eight friends provides more support than six friends and seven friends. So the larger the guide, the more support that this provides. The second is to use supportive shapes, for example, for the right coronary, for any complex PCI, the amplats left is the guide of choice. For the left, the EBU and XP are the guides of choice. For right-sided bypass grafts, the multipurpose guide. And for left-sided bypass grafts, the amplats guide. Third, access side. In many cases, femoral access does provide superior support, especially if a long sheath is used. The fourth one is using the independent hand technique, as described in video 9.2. Using this technique, the operator advances the balloon or stance with one hand, the right hand, and that leaves the left hand free to adjust the guide position, push the guide, and provide additional support. The fifth way is to deeply intubate the guide catheter. This is an example of difficulty delivery in the right coronary artery with clockwise rotation. We see the guide is actually being deeply intubated into the right coronary artery. Eventually, it's almost all the way down to the lesion, and that facilitated delivery of balloons and stents with a nice final result, both before and after. You can see here the guide is essentially all the way down to the distal right coronary artery. The sixth way is to use a guide, is to use a guide extension. This essentially is the same mechanism as deeply seating the guide catheter, but is done through the guide catheter extension. Three types are currently available in the US, the guide liner trap liner, the Godzilla, and the telescope. And what the guide extensions do is to allow deep vessel intubation as well as coaxial alignment. How to deliver them? It is best to deliver a guide extension using the so-called inch warming technique in which uh, a small balloon is advanced halfway in and halfway outside the guide extension. The balloon is inflated, the balloon is then deflated, and while it's being deflated, the guide extension is advanced, in which uh, way it slides over the balloon after it has been centered within the target coronary vessel. Another important part of the technique for using guide extensions is to place them under a towel to prevent wrapping of the guide extension push rod with the guide wires. The guide extensions are very powerful, can truly improve support, but also they can cause complications such as dissections. That is why injections should not happen if there's dump and pressure waveform, and also can lead to equipment deformation. Usually this happens when trying to advance equipment through the proximal collar. 
And the final and seventh way to improve the guide caster support is by using the anchoring techniques. There are two of them. One is the side branch anchor technique and the other is the distal anchor technique. In the side branch anchor technique, a workhorse wire is advanced into a side branch and then a balloon sized one to one to the size of the side branch is advanced into the branch, inflated usually at six to eight atmospheres. And this provides strong support for the guide catheter that then allows advancement of other equipment through another guide wire. The other technique that uh, involves anchoring is the distal anchoring technique, also a very powerful technique. There are also two guide wires inserted into the target vessel. And then a balloon is inflated over one of those wires. What this does is it pins the other wire and that facilitates advancement of equipment over the second wire. So side branch anchoring and distal anchoring, two powerful techniques to improve guide caster support. A variation of the anchoring technique is the so-called body wire stand anchor. This is uh, a case in which uh, there is a proximal lesion and a distal lesion. There is a stand deployed over the first wire, jailing the second wire against the vessel wall that provides extra guide support for delivering additional equipment uh, distal in the vessel. Moving on to the second major category of techniques, which is uh, changing the guide wire. The first uh, way to do that is to insert more wires, the so-called body wires. One or sometimes multiple body wires can improve the guide support and facilitate equipment delivery. Support wires can be particularly useful, such as the Grand Slam and the Iron Man. Those wires have a stiff supportive body but still have a soft tip and can enhance support for delivering equipment. A special case of support wire is the wiggle wire. This wire has bends in its shaft close to the tip and what those bends do is they deflect the equipment that we're trying to deliver and then that can facilitate delivery through tortuosity, calcium and through previously placed stents. This is an example of uh, such a case uh, with a distal right coronary ar artery target lesion. Guide extension was used in attempts to deliver equipment that was challenging, but uh, despite using the guide extension that was inserted fairly deeply in the vessel, um, it was difficult to deliver the stents. You can see the guide extension is essentially almost all the way to the right posterior lateral vessel, but despite that, stents could not be delivered, despite using a body wire and then using the wiggle wire that enabled successful delivery of the stent and successful treatment of the lesion. So wiggle wire and other support wires can be very useful for challenging equipment delivery. A variation of the body wire is to put a balloon over the body wire that can help deflect the equipment. Another variation of, this, of uh, a technique to improve wire support is the so-called deep wire crossing technique recently described in JIC. In this technique, uh, a polymer jacketed soft non-taper wire, such as the Fielder FC or the Whisper, is actually advanced through small connections into the ventricular cavity. And what this does is it allows equipment delivery over the stiff part of the guide wire, which is easier to achieve. Another special uh, way to prevent problems if uh, delivering through previous stents is to ensure that the wire has actually gone through the stent and not under the stent strut. And that is why when wiring through previous stent, it is best to use a knuckled workhorse wire. Moving on to the third type of techniques for facilitating delivery, that has to do with uh, lesion modification, both the target lesion as well as the proximal vessel. This can be done with balloon angioplasty, use of plaque modification balloons, atherectomy, as well as intravascular lithotripsy. There are multiple modalities, once again, for modifying the vessel. In cases of severe calcification, atherectomy, plaque modification balloons, sometimes laser, all can help um, with equipment delivery. Also, one can use a small balloon such as the 1.0 millimeter Subfire Pro that is highly deliverable. If uh, the problem is within previously placed stents, one can use a laser 
and sometimes laser with contrast to facilitate stent expansion. The fourth major category of techniques is changing the balloon or the stand we're trying to deliver. Having a shorter balloon or a shorter stand is easier to deliver than a longer one. And for stands, using a thinner strut stand is easier to deliver. For example, the Orsairo stands have the thinner struts and they are the most deliverable in challenging anatomy. Sometimes one can bend the stand shaft. However, this may carry some risk of detachment of the stand during attempts to deliver it. And final, a fifth category of techniques, is uh, asking the patient to take a deep breath that might modify the location of the guide and maybe straighten the coronary arteries, and also uh, administering a lubricious agent such as rotaglide or viperglide during attempts to deliver equipment. So in summary, there are five major technique categories for delivering balloon stents or other equipment through challenging coronary segments and using those techniques or a combination of those techniques can facilitate delivery in the vast majority of cases. Thank you.